It's Freedom Files with James Burns on American Freedom Radio. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is June 9th. 2011. I am your host, James Burns, along with Adam, our network producer, man in the helm back at AFRHQ in Austin, Texas. I am coming at you live from Shreveport, Louisiana, and we got coming up in just a moment, the one and only Bob Chapman, the international forecaster himself. Of course, the website is theinternationalforecaster.com, and a big, big day we have today for you, because the big thing, obviously, Bob and I are going to be discussing first off the hat is going to be what's going on in Switzerland. Bilderberg. It's happening this weekend. And without further ado, we welcome to the show Bob Chapman. Hey, Bob, how are you doing, sir? Oh, fine, thank you. Nice to be here again. It's always a pleasure to have you on, Bob. And uh, the big thing happening this weekend, of course, is Bilderberg. Over 100 of the world's most richest, powerful people meeting behind closed doors. And apparently, uh, you know, they've gotten so much attention over the past couple of years, thanks to the alternative media, that now they have this uh, big, giant, white curtain, uh, quote-unquote, security fence all over the, the uh, all around the hotel. So uh, I, I think we are getting to them. Well, I, th- I think we are, too. We can thank uh, uh, Jim Tucker, who has been following this for many years, and, uh, and also Danny Eslin. And uh, they get in there ahead of time, and they... Uh, make arrangements with people who work in the area, feed them information, and uh, and they're at San Moritz. But I understand that some of the things are going to take place in Zurich and in Geneva. And uh, Geneva's not uh, Zurich's not too far away, but Geneva is a fair piece. I lived in Switzerland for a long time, but anyway, um, they're. Um, they had the road closed uh, yesterday. I think they had to throw the uh, events forward one day, and then they were stopping cars and searching them and and all that sort of thing. So, and then there was uh, a possible uh, uh, bomb threat, and that followed things up pretty good. And so, uh, I think uh, things get off to a rocky start, and I think that's wonderful. I agree entirely, Bob, with everything you said. I mean, especially the part about Jim Tucker and uh, Ashlyn. I mean, they've been out there for years. I mean, Jim Tucker's been, you know, following Bilderberg forever. And, I mean, a lot of people laughed at him at first. They blew him off. They thought he was nuts. But, you know, I mean, the, the guy has proven time and time again that Bilderberg is not a fantasy. It's not like Santa Claus. It's not the Easter Bunny. It's uh, as real as you and me, unfortunately. It is, and these are the people who run the world. And at these meetings, uh, which is treasonous for Americans who attend those meetings, they make secret deals and uh, how they're going to rig this economy and rig that economy and who's going to be the next president of Germany and who's going to be the next president of the United States. I mean, this is a, uh, I don't know what the word for it is, but uh, this is something that they should not be doing. And it's in secret. You know, for years and years, there have been people attending who work for major media throughout the world. And they don't report on it because they're sworn to silence. I mean, what kind of a deal is that? It's a hypocrisy. I mean, these people are supposed to report the news, get to the truth, uh, tell the, the public about what's going on. And yet they go into these secret meetings like Bilderberg, other organizations out there, and, you know, they keep their lips shut. I mean, right there, I mean, in my opinion, Bob, they officially uh, basically undid everything that they were supposed to do as journalists. I mean, they're, they've, I don't know what, I'm trying to look for the right word for them as well. I well, they, aid, they uh, aid and abet a conspiracy. Exactly. And furthermore, they've, they've betrayed uh, what it means to be a journalist. That's right. And uh, who was always there, uh, the Washington Post and New York Times and uh, the uh, New Zurich Zeitung, uh, uh, Le Monde, uh, uh, and, and all of the major newspapers. Of course, the Russians and the Chinese don't get invited. But um, anyway, it's wrong. 
And uh, I'm, I'm happy that they're doing that because the more heat we put on these people, <clears throat> the more people are going to know what they're doing and the less effective they're going to be. And they're going to have to accelerate programs that they don't want to accelerate. I mean, look at the how they get bogged down in Greece. Now, <clears throat> I think, and, and, and this is not egotistical, and I think uh, my being on radio, television, and the major <clears throat> newspapers in Greece, along with um, Alex Jones and and uh, uh, Max Kaiser, I think it made a tremendous difference. I think we put up a roadblock for the bankers in Europe. And what's happened is, unless the bankers back off on on collateralizing loans with properties, which they didn't make Ireland and Portugal do, I think none of that's going to happen. And if they want to make any deal at all, they're going to have to make a deal whereby the Greeks are not paying 15% interest rates. They're paying 35 or 4 or 5%. And that is going to be only a stopgap measure as it is. And what has happened is that the tables have been turned on them because the Greeks in general, not the government, are saying, we're not going to do that. I mean, they got 150,000 people in the street every day. And it, there's no violence, but they're, well, some of them are uh, carrying around nooses, <laughs> and they've been hanging them on light standards to outside of the House of Representatives to make, that, to, to make believe that uh, that's what they're going to do to them if they vote for this sort of thing. And the president, uh, PM, of Greece, uh, George Papadreou, he doesn't have the votes. He's short 30 votes, 10 of which are in his own par- party. And so there's no legal way they can make it happen. Now, why is that terrible? It's terrible for the bankers because 33 banks own something like $100 billion worth of bonds. And the banks are all broke as it is. So if they don't give the Greeks a good deal, the Greeks are going to say, fine, we're going to to default. What happens then? Well, what happens is that the banks go under, the biggest banks in Europe, and the countries become insolvent that are holding the bonds to some degree. I mean, the ramifications are enormous. So if the euro and the banks and the countries in Europe are in serious financial trouble just because of Greece, never mind the other players who probably will follow Greece, the whole world monetary system come down. And this is what this is all about here. It's one of the most important events in history. People will look back and say that, but they don't realize it now, most of them. But that's what this spells out. And uh, one of the things, according to uh, Jim Tucker, that they are pushing at Bilderberg is they're trying to get the U.S. further in debt by bailing out several countries, including uh, Greece, Portugal, uh, a lot of these countries that you've talked about several times on this show and others that are in really bad straits uh, financially. And uh, that's one of the things they're discussing. Uh, uh, Another thing is how the elite is very concerned about how the U.S. Congress is starting to turn against the uh, U.N., NATO, quote-unquote, humanitarian Libyan war. And, of course, they're really concerned about the growing liberty movement, uh, the alternative media, you know, led by yourself, Alex Jones, uh, Jim Tucker, and uh, Max Kaiser, countless others, as well as the uh, um, free and open Internet. I mean, they're – I think they're running scared right now. Best news I heard for a long time. I've been at this 52 years. I can remember back in the 60s, we were giving pamphlets out. I mean, that's the only armament we had. And today we get talk radio and we get the Internet. And, you know, one of the things I've noticed, too, I think we're getting a more positive, uh, more widespread acceptance outside the United States than we are in the United States. And I think... One of the reasons for that is that I think Americans believe that it just can't happen here. 
I mean, the same thing the people in Sodom and Gomorrah said. Can't happen here. Well, I get news for them. It can. Yeah. I'm sure the people in Rome thought the same thing before the barbarians came. I think you're right. Herman the German. Absolutely. And it's, it's interesting. About half their arming in Rome were Germans. Yeah, long, uh, it long, it long had passed two by two or three hundred years that Romans would uh, be in the arm, army as soldiers, not officers, but soldiers. In France, still today, the Foreign Legion has French officerial corps, and all the rest, generally speaking, are foreigners. Yeah, the French Foreign Legion. And I, I, I really do think, Bob, that history is repeating itself here. I mean, Americans have a similar mindset that so many other uh, empires have right on the verge of the fall. They think, oh, we're great, we're mighty, nothing can ever happen to us. But then once the uh, the rug gets pulled out from underneath us, then you're going to see a lot more Americans uh, finally get it. But once they finally open their eyes up to what's really happening, it's going to be too late. Well, we don't know what that configuration is going to be. And uh, uh, I think fighting the fight that we have at hand is the most important thing to derail these people. And the longer that the situation in Europe lasts, the worse it's going to be for, we'll call them the Bilderbergers or the Illuminati. And, uh, and that's going to be followed by municipal and state problems in the United States, never mind the funding that has to be made for the U.S. Treasury. I mean, I'm writing an article right now for Saturday, and <clears throat> I mean, how, would he, how can anybody for one minute think that the Federal Reserve can stop buying U.S. Treasury, treasuries and agencies and some other securities? Now, they're buying about 80% on average of all of that paper bonds. I mean, there's nobody to buy them. They have to do it. I mean, th there is no argument whatsoever. I mean, it's so simple, probably uh, an eighth or tenth grader could figure it out. They've got to do it. Otherwise, they pull the plug and the whole thing is down the chute. That's going to happen sooner or later. But do they really want it to happen next week or something like that? Yeah, I seriously doubt that they want to happen as soon as, as um, next week or next month. They probably have this timetable, as you've talked about before, and, and things are being rushed because so many different things are happening. I mean, a perfect example regarding these Treasury bills, I came across this article last week. Uh, I never mentioned it till now. I mean, I, I just had so many other things going on. But uh, China has div divested 97% uh, of its holdings in U.S. Treasury bills, so that's making a bad situation for for us even worse because now they're – they're they're pulling you know the carpet out from under us. Well, um, I, I I'm sorry, but I have to correct you. Okay. Ninety seven percent of the bills of under one year. Oh. Now they're holding about one point three, and they have about three hundred billion. Uh, was it two or three hundred billion in that paper? So they still got about a trillion one, and the Japanese are holding about a trillion. So between the two of them, they get two trillion. They're not going to buy anymore. And the Japanese and the Chinese probably over the next year, maybe two years, will have to sell $500 billion between them. So there's going to be a lot of pressure. So there's absolutely no way that the Federal Reserve can stop without saying, hey, we're going to walk away from the whole thing. Now let's have a big meeting and uh, let's default. And then, of course, that will give others like the Europeans, Chinese, Russians, in particular, impetus to say, well, you know, you've done this, and, uh, and, and look, what, look what we've got here uh, with the dollar. Uh, we've got to change that. And all the players know you've got to use gold. So you can't use the SDR from the IMF unless they change the rules, which I don't think they're going to. So you're either going to end up with the dollar again, and that's what the, one of the reasons why Dominique Strauss-Kahn was taken down. And I had a long talk with the editor 
of another publication this morning about this, and he agrees with me completely. There were a number of reasons, but that was one of them. And uh, uh, there's a big fight going on between the U.S. and the European Illuminati over control. And they're at opposite ends on this one. And when you have that, you have nothing but problems for these people who we dislike so much because they want to enslave us. And so things are not well at all among the bad guys. And when the U.S. contingent goes as far as to entrap Mr. Strauss-Kahn, which was fairly easy to do because of his past in that sort of thing, uh, the main reason they want the dollar to remain the world currency, they want us to continue to use the IMF to loot countries. They want to have the Chinese, the Japanese, India, others come in and participate in all of these things that are going on financially. Uh, Bob, and, we got to go to a break real quick. Bob sure. Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. More of him right after this. You're listening to Freedom Files on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is June 9th, 2011. James Burns, along with Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And, Bob, before the break, you were talking about uh, your take on the fall of Strauss-Kahn. And another thing I'm really interested in is the difference here between uh, the two different uh, Illuminati factions between the Americans and the Europeans. Well, that relationship has always been somewhat tenuous because one group is greedier than the other. And the Europeans think that um, uh, they should be in charge all the time and uh, particularly the royal families, because uh, they kept this thing going, uh, particularly since the 1400s, although uh, they they uh, started to get involved in 1307 when uh, uh, they managed to murder uh, most of the crusaders who were running the financial system at the time. Of course, with the blessing of the Pope and, and the rest of the heads of monarchy in Europe, and that's what that was all about. But uh, this is nothing new to these people. I mean, they know all the history. Uh, they're all connected, usually by bloodline, although there's a lot of other players who come in from time to time, people like uh, uh, Brzezinski and Kissinger and Soros. Uh, but those, those people, they're front people, so the people behind the scenes who tell them what to do. And... Uh, uh, they have uh, think tanks and foundations and professionals who are working all over the world 24-7 to come up with the ideas that they want to push. Uh, but uh, they're, they're, they're argumentative right now, and that's good for us. And, um, and I hope it stays the same. And uh, quite frankly, I'm only guessing, but I don't think there's Bilderberg or meeting is going to go very well. No, I don't think it's going to go well at all either because they're getting, of each passing year, they get more and more unwanted media attention. Plus, uh, you uh, revealed to us earlier that they seem to be have broken it up into three different uh, camps. Uh, one in uh, this uh, Switzerland, and there's two others out there as well, kind of like, uh, I guess, uh, satellite Bilderberg meetings going on at the same time. Right. Uh, Zurich is uh, in northern Switzerland, and uh, not too far away is St. Moritz. And then Geneva is essentially near the French border in southern Switzerland. And, uh, and I'm very surprised that they're doing that because it triples their problems. But there's got to be a reason why. I don't know what it is, but um, uh, it's unusual. I mean, to say the least. I mean, the only thing I can think of, Bob, and this is this might be giving them too much credit, is what's going on at St. Moritz could just be a distraction. They they knew that people were going to know about it, find out about it, and maybe the real meetings are happening at these other two locations. Then again, uh, I would also say that they probably are having 
a lot of problems, a lot of difficulties, and perhaps this is a result of, of the uh, infighting starting to, you know, boil up. Well, I hope so. Uh, we're just guessing at this point, and we won't have the reports here for another couple of weeks. Uh, but I think we got a good start, just to put it that way. And, uh, you know, we deserve that. I mean, these people have been mus- misusing uh, mankind, particularly Western civilization, for many, many years, a thousand years. And it wasn't until 15, 20 years ago that we could really get the word out. I'm sure there were people in 1412 and 1527 and 1683 that knew all about this. But how are they going to get the message out? Uh, There was no way to do it, really. And I mean, it's hard to, you know, influence a lot of people on your own. And then also, you know, they didn't have law and order in those days like they have today. And if you open your mouth up, you ended up with your throat cut. So, you know, the people in power had great power. They have great power today, but they can't get away with a lot of things that they did many years ago. No, they can't. And and they still do it every now and then. They'll they'll have a convenient, uh, quote-unquote, suicide and whatnot. But it's getting a lot more difficult for them to carry out their agendas because more and more people are watching them, more and more... Uh, people throughout the world are waking up to the New World Order agenda, to what they're about, their goals, thanks to yourself and many others out there who have been on the front lines for a long time now, you know, putting the truth out there. Meanwhile, you have the mainstream media. They want to focus on crap like uh, Wiener's Wiener. And it, it's really sad, though, that you have them, you know, send their big guns and focus their attention on that, which is basically nothing more than another distraction, Bob. Meanwhile, in Switzerland, you have this going on. Well, it's certainly, uh, uh, at the rate they're going, they probably will stop having meetings the next two or three years because the publicity is so great. And I don't know how they're going to rearrange it, but uh, they got problems. Yeah, I mean, to say the least, I think they have serious problems right now. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, another one of their major concerns, according to Jim Tucker that we were talking about earlier, uh, was uh, the... Uh, the uh, humanitarian effort going over Libya and how it, it seems like that uh, the Congress, and I'm sure that most of them are probably still in the pockets of the military-industrial complex, so they'll gladly vote for another war. But it does seem like that there's a growing anti-war movement happening within the country, and it, it, it's no surprise because of each other war and military action we get involved with, it costs us a couple more million, billion dollars a year. I mean, for example, Bob, According to the Pentagon, I mean Pentagon, uh, the uh, current war we're having in uh, Libya is already reached uh, the uh, $750 million range. Yeah, and, uh, it, you know, the, the wars and occupations in Iraq and Afghanistan were transparent, and people could see what they were doing. But now they're in Libya, they have absolutely no justification whatsoever. And these people are painting themselves to be absolute monsters. Monsters. I mean, here is a semi-defenseless country being bombed every day by the most powerful air forces in the world. I mean, what kind of foolishness is that? And they got an army of rebels made up of Al-Qaeda and Taliban, the leader is an ex-Libyan who's worked for the Central Intelligence Agency for the last 20 years and has lived in Virginia. Uh, the food and munitions are being supplied by the United States. They had American special forces in Libya six months before anything happened. And the British went in about two weeks before, which is SAS, the equal number of of, uh, special forces in the United States. And now that today, you know, yesterday, the Libyan rebels 
delivered their first oil tanker full of oil to the United States. They're stealing the oil. It, what's going on is incredible. A $100 billion sovereign fund for Libya has been looted already. In fact, there's a congressional investigation coming up on Goldman Sachs' participation in that looting. Very unusual. Uh, there's $100 billion in that fund. They want to get their hands on the 485 tons of gold that are sitting in Tripoli in their central bank, although they may have moved it for all I know. Um, they want to control the four aquifers under the country, and they want to amalgamate Libya with the rest of Africa, which Gaddafi wouldn't do. And the main complaint was, look, these people have nothing in common with us, and which is true. I mean, I lived in Africa for years. And from the middle Africa downward, they have nothing in common with the people in the north, perhaps with the exception of the Nigerians. And and so this is uh, one of the programs of the New American Century, which is a neocon movement, which was started by a group of, uh, of communists, basically Crystal and that whole gang. And, uh, or you can call them Marxist, Leninist, whatever you, label you want to put on them. And you can see now the interchangeable nature of Fabian socialism, socialism, Leninism, Marxism, national socialism. They're all created by the same group of people. And they've all been failures. But what's good about them, it is allows the rich corporations, which are run by these people, and the solidification of power in each country to be melded into one in a world government. A thing like National Socialism, which will turn into International Socialism, but we've known it in years past as Nazism. Corporatist fascism. That's what we got. Nobody wants to see it. Well, when they lead them off to the internment camps, they'll catch on. I agree entirely, Bob. It doesn't matter what you call it. Uh, neocons, Nazis, uh, socialists, communists, it's all tyranny, in my opinion. It's all tyranny. It's all oppression. It's, it has nothing to do with liberty or freedom. They're going to do everything they can to suppress us, and that's what we stand against. That's what you stand against. That's what I stand against. That's what so many others out there are resisting right now, and the worse it gets, I think the more and more people are going to stand up against this, and at the end of the day, they're going to lose. I agree with you. But what people have to understand, it's not going to be a tea party. Uh, this is going to be very, very nasty. And they're going to have their wars, and a lot of people are going to die, and it might be years before we get our freedom back. And so you've got to prepare. And that's why we tell you all these things, so you'll understand what's being done to you. And the next step is you've got to fight it, whether it's with words or letters or the Internet or whatever it is. You have to let people know, we know what these people are doing, and it's not good, and we want it stopped. And I'll tell you, uh, the military is well aware of it. And they know exactly what's going on. And they're behind the people. Just like the military in Greece today, they're behind the people. That's another reason why the bankers have got two strikes against them. They got real problems. So I'm optimistic like you are. It's just that people have to understand 
We are going to get our freedom back, but we may have to pay a terrible price to get it because the people were going to unseat and separate from their wealth and incarcerate them for long periods of time. They're not going to go for that at all. And they're going to do everything they can to get rid of people like me and you and others who spread the word throughout the world of what these people are trying to do. You're absolutely right, Bob. And you know something? I, I believe that if, if, the, if it does get to the point where they decide to start you know, eliminating us, all that's going to do is prove us right. They're, they're going to turn us into martyrs for our cause, and it's going to cause more people to rise up against them. I mean, and, and this is one thing I've talked about on my show several times. Even if Ron Paul somehow uh, gets the GOP nomination and, and wins the uh, election in November 2012, uh, the battle has just begun there. I mean, you still have a long ways to go before we turn things around. And, and I think a lot of people out there need to grasp this concept that it's just beginning, If even if he does win. I think you're absolutely correct, and I think he realizes that as well. I mean, you can't th turn this thing on a dime. Uh, it, it can't happen that way. No, it can't. It absolutely cannot. I mean, for one thing, I mean, he's going to have a lot of resistance. Even if he does get elected, he's going to definitely have a... Uh, a Congress, no matter who gets elected, it doesn't matter if it's Democrats or Republicans. Uh, for the most part, they're going to be they're going to be resistant until, say, maybe 2014, when if if he proves to be popular enough, maybe we'll get more pro Ron Paul candidates in office. So it's at least going to be at least two years before we have any real symbolism of of turning things around. But I think that we're just going to have to stand with them because you're going to have the, the mainstream media. You're going to have the powers that be. They're all going to be doing everything they can to railroad his, his presidency. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Final segment with him coming up right after this right here on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon, June 9th, 2011. James Burns, along with Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And uh, more good news for the Ron Paul campaign over the weekend, Bob. They raised another million dollars. Plus, uh, some big news coming out today. Uh, another neocon is about to bite the dust. Newt Gingrich's campaign manager, his senior strategist, and his key aides have all resigned. So it looks like the new boat is sinking. Well, um, I think that's wonderful. Uh, he has sold out everybody. Uh, he's a trilateralist, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He's a Bilderberger. And um, he's a despicable person. And you're just being nice there. <laughs> if if we weren't on several radio stations across the country, I'm sure you had other nice words to say about Newt Gingrich. But... He definitely won't be missed, in my opinion. No, I think he should go back to teaching school instead of uh, lying to people and doing all those things that those people do. I agree entirely. No, I think he needs to go back to Tiffany's and uh, work off that, what, $500,000 he owes him. Oh, I didn't know that. How, how did he arrange that? Um, apparently, um, uh, he uh, has been uh, purchasing some stuff for his, I don't know, his wife or one of his mistresses. I don't know. He's been I think, married a couple times. And he, he racked up this uh, multi-hundred-thousand-dollar bill with Tiffany's over the past couple years. They say it could be in, anywhere between two hundred and five hundred thousand dollars and $500,000. I mean, that's not exactly what I would call fiscal conservatism, Bob. No, I would call it profligate spending. But, you know, these people are arrogant and brazen and they think that they're masters of the universe. And uh, they kind of walk around on a cloud of uh, air that nobody could see. And they're special, at least in their own mind's eye. Own mind's eye. And so um, you expect things from those people like that. You're right. And it, it, it reminds me of a, a certain French king and his wife, Bob. You mean Marie? Yeah. <laughs> Well, the only good thing for going for Marie was she was an Austrian. Yeah, but it didn't work out so well for either one of them, as you've pointed out several times. 300,000 people out of 30 million lost their heads. And it may very well happen again to those who have committed treason. And uh, the likes of the Bushes, uh, first in line. 
You're absolutely right. I mean, they they deserve to be in the line. Uh, Cheney, uh, our our current uh, president, Obama, also known as Decider 2.0. All he's really done is pick up exactly where Bush left off. I mean, the list goes on and on, Bob. There of of the uh, traitors, and I believe that as more and more people wake up to this, and I still think we're a long ways from this happening, but I think it's becoming more and more of a reality. I think they're going to eventually, all of them, they're going to have to answer for the crimes they've committed. I'm glad you brought that up. And I'm glad we discussed it because I know that every program that I'm on, they monitor it. And I like to tell them on each and every program, <laughs> we, know, we know who you are. We not, know what you've done and what you're doing. And you're not going to get away with it. And there is going to be a time you're going to have to pay for all this unless you win. And I don't think you're going to. And so we're going to set back the world government movement perhaps for three or four or five hundred years. And uh, maybe forever. And we could have a peaceful world if you can believe that. And uh, so uh, that prospect is really exciting consider what the world's been through for the last thousand years. Yeah, I, I believe so. I think we'd be better off if we simply learn to coexist and leave each other alone. And, you know, have, you know, tr like, like the founders talked about, uh, trade with people, but don't get involved in foreign entanglements. Well, that's what um, Ron Paul said in one of his re recent speeches. And it's an old American adage. Of course, we've had wars anyway, but um, it is, we're going uh, in the right direction. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I, I definitely think we're heading in the right way, Bob, and I, I think that more people are, are waking up to all this and more people are finally starting to get it. I mean, back in 2007, 2008, uh, you know, Ron Paul had a huge following. I was part of the local uh, meetup group here. I was out volunteering, putting out yard signs for Ron Paul and on the side of the road every weekend with a sign. And yeah, you know, we were a minority back then. I mean, we had a good following. We had a good momentum. But over the past four years, uh, the Ron Paul revolution has grown by leaps and bounds. And I, I think that barring any attempt to sabotage the campaign or railroad him, I think that he has a very real possibility of pulling it off this time, especially if you look at all the people he's having to run against, like Newt Gingrich. I mean, it looks like he's on his way out. Uh, Romney, he's not exactly liked by his fellow uh, GOPers. And... The rest of them I just laugh at. Uh, Bob, are you there? I think we're uh, having some uh, technical difficulties, so hopefully we'll get him back in a second. Uh, you're listening to Freedom Files Radio Show. I am James Burns, of course, along with Bob Chapman. The internationalforecaster.com is his website. Uh, we were, I was hearing the phone click in and click out. So, so maybe the powers that be weren't exactly happy with uh, what Bob and I were talking about a moment ago. I mean, who can blame them? They, they want less people to know about their actions. <laughs> the less, the better. Let's just say that. So hopefully we'll get him back up before uh, uh, the uh, end of this uh, segment. But anyways, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the International Forecaster, now's an excellent time to do so. I mean, if you want to know the truth, if you want, to, you, if you want someone who's, who's not going to feed you a bunch of BS like the mainstream media propaganda machine does on a daily basis, if you want someone who's just going to give you the facts, you know, just the facts, ma'am, that's it. Bob Chapman's the man, and he's been doing it for, well, quite some time now with the International Forecaster. And it's a growing publication. He continues to add more and more people to it because what he's talking about is the truth. I mean, he's speaking truth to power. With every radio show he goes on, with every single publication he, he posts, he puts out there for you, I mean, he's getting to the truth. Like so many other people out there in the movement for, the, for so long now. I mean, I'm, I'm still a, a young new fish to this whole thing. When it comes to the alternative media, I'm proud to be uh, part of what's going on. Even though I consider myself a small fish by comparison, uh, it's it's awesome to be part of what's uh, transpiring. And we're we're trying to get the phone lines back up. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is June 9th, 2011. I am James Burns, your host. And yeah, I mean, the moment Bob started uh, questioning and uh, you know making it a point to tell the uh, powers that be that they're going to be held responsible. That's when I started hearing the uh, clicking. You probably started hearing it as well. And <laughs> it doesn't surprise me that, you know, they probably tried to do something like this. I mean, like last week, for example, I had 
uh, Laura Murray on the show. I've had her on uh, yesterday as well, but she was talking about some very uh, compelling stuff, and we lost her for about 10 minutes. Now, it could be a coincidence. Sometimes these things just happen, but I don't know. I mean, I, I, I seriously doubt it this time because we were, we were definitely you know, pointing the finger right at them, and while you know, my show doesn't get you know, thousands of people listening to the show a day or millions like bigger shows... Uh, we are growing. We are waking up more people ourselves. We're doing our part because I think every every show out there, the more voices out there, the more writers and more alternative media journalists, the better. And because it helps in the long run, uh, build up the movement. You know, more ripples in the water of change and truth and revolution. And it's really hurting the um, the movement. The the uh, New World Order agenda, it's not exactly going so well for them. I mean, we, look what's happening in Bilderberg right now. You have so many people descending on Switzerland coming up this weekend. You, they've, they've put up this big white curtain, this huge white curtain, because they don't want people seeing who's showing up to these meetings. I mean, you had Alex Jones a couple years ago. He went up to the Bilderberg in uh, Canada. Then he went to the one in Virginia. They had cameras there. They were videotaping the people showing up in limos. They were able to identify a whole bunch of these people. Jim Tucker's been going out there for years to Bilderberg, along with Daniel Esselin and several others throughout the world, going out there, exposing them. You know, at first, of, yeah, the mainstream media was good at blowing us off and, and saying, oh, it, this is a bunch of BS. Oh, they're, they're lying. Bilderberg doesn't exist. It's not real. Don't believe, don't believe what they're saying. Just listen to us. Listen to our lies. You know, playing the part of the mainstream media there. <laughs> but, you know, thanks to the Internet, thanks to... More and more uh, people speaking up, standing up for the truth, like Bob Chapman, like Jim Tucker, like countless others. The truth is getting out there because the people are getting sick and tired of the lies of the mainstream media. The mainstream media is getting worse of each passing year. I mean, look at the big thing they focused on this past week. With everything else going on in the world, they focused on a congressman's package, you know, Twitter photos. That was the big to do. That's where they sent their big guns. They're big anchors focusing on a congressman's package and his, you know, messages back and forth with some girls. That's not exactly important, in my opinion. Another example of them being discredited and the alternative media rising up to become the true future of journalism. Thank you so much, Bob Chapman, for being on the show. Be sure and subscribe to The International Forecaster, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. 